If someone told me you can only bring one piece of cookware, get out of your house, you're on your way to your next place of living, we're gonna blow your house up in 10 minutes. This is the one piece of cookware that I would take. This is my Solid Technics Oz Ion 26 centimeter skillet. About six months ago, I went on about the most dad quest you can go on. That is, of course, the quest to cook the best burger. Um, and I tried a few different types of skillets. I went on a bit of a skillet buying binge. Some I liked, some I didn't like. Look, we've always been a Teflon family and like a get a $30 one and throw out the old one Teflon family. So cycling through cookware every nine months or so. Not great. And you see all the things about Teflon, well not Teflon, the adhesive substance that sticks Teflon to the pan. There's a lot of things that aren't good. We still definitely have Teflon pans. I have some pretty nice little uh, TFL uh, exchangeable handle uh, a pair that I use and they do great for things where you just don't want any stick at all like when you're making a big sauce or something and you don't want to accidentally forget about it for a couple of seconds and it's stuck and it's ruined sure we still have that I did try the completely stainless pans in a skillet didn't really take to it as much as I took to this and I ended up with a system really of a large stainless pan which is is quite good for like onion and garlic based casserole type sauces where you can sort of let it stick and scrape it off just a little bit, not too bad. Um, I ended up with a large one of those for like bigger projects. I ended up with a imitation La Crosette type, um, uh, what's the word for it? Um, enamelware uh, casserole dish, which I used to make like a long slow cooked Bonnet sauce or something like that. Then I ended up with a really nice little um, ceramic coated egg cooking pan which I use just to cook eggs. That's it. Makes four little eggs, scramble them up, it makes a little puffy omelette style thing. No stick, no effort. And then of course, ended up with this guy. These are $150 in this size and they go up and you can get the bigger one with the handle on the other end. They go up to about $270 for like the biggest, chunkiest boys in the range. This one here, if I could do it again, I probably actually would have gone slightly larger, but this is a very manageable size even still. And even though this AUS ion that this guy is made of, Oz ion, does spruik that it's about a third lighter than a lot of other normal cast irons, and it definitely does feel a bit lighter than other cast iron skillets have had in this size, uh, it's definitely still on the heavier side when you're quickly maneuvering around the kitchen, for sure. So what's the deal with cast iron cookware? Well, cast iron cookware is kind of the it's the generational cookware. It's the one you hold on to forever. I mean, you can you can do the same with obviously enamelware and stainless steel, all that sort of thing. But the benefit of the main selling point of cast iron is that it gets better the longer you use it. The blacker it gets, the better. See, when you get this, it's actually quite an attractive looking tan colored pan. Um, kind of what I guess the handle color still sort of is, but even that's built up some patina from me oily hands holding it. But as you see there, the basic, you know, the cooking part of it is entirely blackened. And that is exactly by design, that's exactly what you do. So when you set up with your brand new cast iron pan, what you can do is just start cooking bacon and oil on it over and over again and sausages and you have some scrape offs and you have some, you know, light washes and that sort of thing. And eventually, yeah, that'll, that'll build you up a nice little uh, seasoning, a nice little sort of patina of, of oils and food stuffs that you want. Uh, what I did though, I looked up a seasoning guide and the guide that I followed and sort of modified to my own where well, I combined a few of them, I cooked duck fat, heat that up, bake it in the oven upside down and then I used rice bran oil and then I used butter. So 
Butter is the smokiest uh, and so it gives it a nice sort of blackening and the rice bran oil and the duck fat have a lower smoke point so they just actually do the, the physical seasoning first. So I think I did butter first, then duck, then rice bran and then three hours in the oven upside down like so and you're on your way to having a nice seasoning. Not quite there yet, this has definitely been built up from a whole probably six months of cooking some sort of greasy meat on it every other day. And you know, chicken with marinades, you know, soy based sauces and all that sort of thing, all been fried up in here, all contributing their own little part to the, to the overall, you know, surface that you want. And as such, this is almost a non-stick pan. It is not swinging with Teflon in terms of sheer non-stickness, it's not. Uh, things will, if you let them cook too long or if you start with too high a temperature, they will still stick and you'll scrape them off and you, know, you might have to dig a little bit of your um, seasoning off there, the black seasoning. But in general, if you start slow, put your oil on first and just go medium heat no matter what you're cooking, this is basically a non-stick pan. I can cook eggs on this with very little worries. As long as you push them around just a little bit, not sure if I'd want to be cooking absolute perfect sunny side up, no flip eggs, but uh, every other kind of eggs you want to cook on it, it's absolutely great. With regards to washing, I just use a light detergenty brush and get off the bulky bits and then try not to scrub furiously or push. I treat it a bit like a barbecue hot plate, like on your outside barbecue. It's, um, you know, it's gonna have sometimes a little bit of, bit of stubborn stuck there, but often you end up just cooking through it and it'll come off and, you know, just be a part of the next meal. And as gross and weird as that all seems, you gotta remember these are exceedingly hot and, um, you know, well, I haven't got sick yet, have I? And it's been a long, long time. So it does work. It's just, you know, if you need to have everything neat and clean and perfect, you might always struggle with cast iron type pans, but, um, Really, you can clean it successfully, but certainly don't go chucking it in the dishwasher or anything crazy like that. Just go easy on it and wipe off the big bits. It's my advice. The depth of this guy is about four centimeters. So four centimeters to the absolute surface. So it's gonna basically just be a meat pan or a frying up small amounts of onions and garlic and sort of like a seasoning and, and yeah, generally a meat pan. Once it's really well seasoned, you might be able to do some like sauces in it, some small simmer sauces or something like that. But for me, my purpose of it is bacon, steak, sausages, uh, onions, eggs, that sort of thing. Um, that being said, I have moved my eggs onto my little little blue charade pan and it does quite nicely. Uh, I didn't think I would get into pans as much as I have. And I, I am able to have stopped. I do have a slightly compulsive personality where this could have really blown up, but good thing about pans is you need to store the buggers and you know, even a small one, you need a place for all of them. So I have had to slash my, my endeavors of buying pans, but I am really super happy with this one. Um, the, I guess the benefits of it, the iron, the Oz iron rather, it is lighter, but at a cost of being a fair bit more expensive than a pretty standard, you know, simple recipe cast iron pan. Which, you know, you can often get for about 30 or $40. So this is about triple the price. What I like about it is it's Australian made, you know, I'm not usually too bothered about that, but it's cool to have like a sort of a heritage piece of Australian made hardware in the home. It's, it's, it's kind of cool. It's hopefully going to outlive me. Uh, it's got a hundred year plus warranty. They really kind of spruik their warranty on the packaging. The handle wise handles, it's, and it's because it's a one piece cast iron design. They have done a good job of having this these forks here to mitigate the heat spread into the handle. You can have this on the stove for half an hour to an hour and the handle does not get hot back here. Maybe just slightly warm, just through convection radiation, but does not travel as in like sheer heat all the way up, which is good. But it's a bit sort of angular and not super comfortable to, to hold and toss around. It's definitely not like a like a scan pan rounded handle or like a T-fowl, you know, plastic handle or something like that. It's definitely, it's rustic in nature and as such, it's not as nice to sort of just wield and source around. And as such, it's probably not gonna be a pan that you're gonna be lifting up and flipping or, or not ideal. It won't be a favorite one for doing that sort of stuff. But if you're after a pan to plop down and fry yourself a kangaroo fillet or some steak or something like that, this I really, really recommend. Absolutely love it. And quick review on my Oz Iron Solar Technics 26 centimeter skillet.